We all sometimes have things that we kind of just, oh, no. Oh, and that moment, I'm telling you, we need to get to the place where we can plan for it, where we can expect it, so you can overcome it. Our title is, Oh No, You Didn't. But that doesn't sound very good. It's got to be more like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't, right? So what I did is I uh, tried to get my hair, but it's already kind of fallen back down, and that's what it is. But I'm like, hey, you want to see, see a messed up hair? People go, why did he mess his hair up? Oh, no, he didn't. Yes, I did. <laughs> because I don't care. 20,000 people look on Facebook, what do they care? Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. But I can tell you that our lives matter with demonic attacks, with the things that the devil brings near us. So let's look at our Bible, Psalm 107, verse 2. Believe it or not, I have it memorized, but I'll still read it. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You know what that means? We tell people about what God has done in our life, we stand up for our rights. You ever hear somebody say, stand up for your rights? Stand up for your rights? Bree's uncle is a retired cop. I've told you guys this. One of my kids had made a mistake, and I started interrogating my daughter, and I said, hey, did you do, and I can't even remember what it was, and he starts yelling from the other room, don't you answer that. You get a lawyer. You don't answer your dad. You get a lawyer. And I'm like, what is this? Because we have rights. We hear it on TV. We have rights and all this. You have spiritual rights. And what we're going to talk about is how we handle ourselves. And if you don't know how to handle yourself, you are taken by surprise. You are taken off guard. And we want to get to a place where we expect it. So have you ever been surprised or taken off guard? When you had that moment where you went, <gasps> you hear the, <gasps> can you hear that? <gasps> we all do that. We're all able to, <gasps> oh, no, you didn't. Oh, when you have that moment, that's a slight bit of surprise. And your response dictates the outcome. And your response needs to be calculated. We've been talking about Jesus's last weekend. I always talked about how it was all calculated. You see all of the prophecies fulfilled as Jesus carried out the last week of his life before his crucifixion. It has to be purposeful and you have to be prepared for when the demonic attacks come. We talked about it. It's no secret. We know Jesus said you're going to have trials and tribulation, right? We're going to have things that come against us. We're going to have attacks. So how do we handle it? So listen, we all get surprised. Almost got that one on the floor. You saw that. But don't let your response don't let your response be a surprise. This guy, would you quit playing with matches up here? He'll catch this whole place on fire. You, that's a brick building, right? We're OK. So <laughs> brick don't burn that hard. That's why they have pizza ovens. Sit tight. I was ready for that. That's why it didn't take me by surprise. You know, I'm, I've got a fire extinguisher over there. So I knew. See, you got to have your response ready, guys. So when my brother and I were younger, we wanted to help my mom and dad out. I was about second grade. I'll never forget it. It was the summer of second grade. And we decided we were going to build our parents a deck. Mom was at work. Dad was at work. And our aunt was watching us, if you call it watching. She was in on the phone talking to her boyfriend the whole time in the house. So my brother and I, <laughs> we had free rain, baby, and rain we did. So we got into the shed. We got Dad's handsaw because we knew we couldn't. If we turned on the circular saw, our aunt would hear it. And we knew that. So what are you going to do? you got to use a handsaw. So we go out, and we proceed to cut all the railings off of our deck. <laughs> We're dedicated young men, man. Now, I'll tell you, my brother, much stronger than me, he was really good at it. And we got to the point that all the railings were taken off the deck. Looked pretty good. But what a second grader can do. Can you imagine? <laughs> imagine my dad's surprise, huh? But it gets better, so sit tight. So my, my brother and I, okay, well, we got to put a new railing on. So we went, and my dad had a pile of two-by-fours. 
So we were going to make a whole new thing, but we thought, well, we got to get this thing out. Well, Dad only had finished nails. Well, so we started driving finished nails on the board, but we realized, boy, they don't make it all the way through. Did you know that? We didn't know that. You had to have different sizes, see? But I was in second grade. I'm still learning. You got to cut me some slack. So we decided to stand that board up, and then maybe we would make the railing, but we couldn't get the nails in it, so it was difficult. So finally, we found one big nail, got that in there, and then my brother like put the board up on his knee because it kept jiggling so much. So he put it up on his knee so he could, he could cut that board. Cut the board he did, and his leg. And I mean, he got a nice little gasher, but I'm a doctor. I was in second grade, I knew what to do. I got in the house, checked where my aunt was, Got to the bathroom, went to medicine cabinet, and I got out. Stuff's flying everywhere. They're going to kick me out. Um, I, I get out Band-Aids, and I know you got to butterfly stuff shut. I know what you do. So I'm trying to help butterfly them up, and I'm doing everything else. And I run back in because we got to get some salve, you know, that walking stuff. You came in a big old bowl-like thing. I couldn't get the stupid thing open. It's too greasy. And I'm trying, and I'm trying, and I'm trying, and so I'm banging on it. So I got a hammer, and I'm trying to beat this thing open so I can pry the thing open. And my aunt happens to check on us for whatever reason. And when she opened that door, she went, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> and she sees my brother's blood all going down his leg all over the place. And we're like, what do we do? And she's like, what is going on out here? You got boards laying all over the decks, mowed clean. You got one board sticking up that's like, you know, and my brother's bleeding. So she calls my mom. Mom has to come home from work. Mom walks up and says, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> my aunt, by this time, has already gone through a whole bottle of peroxide. She's pouring all over my brother's leg. It's foaming everywhere. It's nice and clean, you know. <laughs> Mom's got to call Dad. This is like a big deal, you know. Got to take him into the hospital, you know. So off my brother goes to the hospital. And you know what? My dad, when he showed up, though, I want to tell you, he wasn't taken by surprise. <laughs> he didn't say, oh, no, you didn't. No, not my dad. No, no, no. He just walked up and said, oh, leave it to kids. No sports cars anymore. No frills. Now no steps. No railing. Leave it to kids. Let's go to the doctor. Got to pay for medical bills. You boys might as well singe up the belt. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's got to come out of something. Grocery bill. He's already prepared. And he was, as much as I think about it now, and I kind of chuckle, but I get it. Like, I get it. It really did cost money. And it really was a problem. But he was already preparing for what needed to happen to continue on. And he didn't spaz out, and he didn't freak out, but we all sometimes receive a shocker. We all sometimes have things that we kind of just, oh, no. Oh, and that moment, I'm telling you, we need to get to the place where we can plan for it, where we can expect it, so you can overcome it. It's, we see all these things, and people are like, well, you just should think positive. You should just think, I'm going to tell you guys, one of my biggest battles in my life is when I'm repairing something. No, 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 we we'll talk about a struggle. That's my battle. Where you can't get the screwdriver in the spot all the way. Right, you can get it in there, but your knuckles are against something else, and you're cutting the end of your knuckle off every time you try to turn it. That's my battle in life. I get those little things all the time. Those things are difficult, and I've gotten to where I've been able to kind of take a breath a lot more and go, this is going to happen. This is the way it's going to be. This is going to take me four hours. And all of a sudden, the pressure comes off because I begin to expect it. I planned for it. And then I can work around. It's like, OK, this is no longer my crisis in life. So planning for the worst puts you in the greatest position for a positive outcome. You know what that reminds me, guys? About time we hit some scripture, huh? The guys are going to be like, that preacher preached all day. Didn't even say anything. So Genesis 29. If you want to turn to it in your Bible, you're welcome to. If you don't, that's fine, too. Take our word for it. We have it up here. Genesis 29, verses 14 through 30. We're talking about Jacob. A little background on Jacob. I know most of you know, but why not? Let's just go over it. Jacob, God of Abraham, okay. Isaac, okay. And 
Jacob. We hear that all the time. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob stole the birthright from his brother Esau. That caused some family drama. Okay, a little bit of family drama. They were almost on Jerry Springer, but he hadn't had the show written out yet. So mom took Jacob to go hang out with her brother, Laban. And so Jacob goes and works for Laban. Laban starts working. He's a hustler. He's a swindler. He starts to, you know how the Bible says you reap what you sow? He gets that back. You know, you people always say God's mercy and God's grace and God's mercy and grace is there. But sometimes we have consequences for our actions. And well, Jacob got to experience that. So Jacob is out there working and he stays with Laban for about a month. And Laban says to him, you shouldn't work for me without pay just because we're relatives. Tell me how much your wages should be. So, you know, back then, I mean, cousins or not, they hook up. So 16 says, now Laban had two daughters. The older daughter was named Leah and the younger was Rachel. There was no sparkle in Leah's eyes. In other words, she wasn't a hottie. He wasn't attracted to her, okay? But Rachel, she was smoking hot. And so because Jacob liked her face, he was in love with Rachel, and he told her father, I'll work for you seven years if you give me the hottie. I mean, Rachel, your younger daughter, as my wife. Agreed. Done, Laban says. No big deal. I'd rather give her to you than anyone else. Stay and work with me. So Jacob worked seven years to pay for Rachel. Is he expecting something? Is he heading in a direction? Okay, this is good. And his love was so strong for her, it seemed but a few days that he just worked so hard for Laban. And finally, the time came for him to marry her. And he says, I have fulfilled my agreement. That's what Jacob tells Laban. Now give me my wife so we can have sex. That's what he asked. He says, I can sleep with her. If you guys don't know what that means, now you do. Okay. Verse 22, so Laban invited everyone in the neighborhood and prepared a wedding feast. But that night, when it was dark, Laban took Leah to Jacob, and he slept with her. Had sex with the wrong girl. This is how Jerry Springer got his idea, okay? <laughs> Laban had given Leah a servant, Zilpha, to be her maid. But Jacob woke up in the morning and was upset. Whoa, 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 you hoodwinked me. He said, oh, no, you didn't. Well, it doesn't say that. He says, what have you done to me? But I can hear him going, oh, no, you didn't. He's a little, little shocked. And he raged. I, I, what have you done to me? I worked seven years for Rachel. Why have you tricked me? Now, this is where we all as Christians have that opportunity to do something. He gives them an explanation. Hey, look, we don't marry off the younger daughter before the older daughter. I can't do that. So go have fun for your next week with your new wife, okay? And when that week is over, the honeymoon is done, then we'll give you Rachel too. I want you guys to look at that in the Bible because everybody thinks that he had to work seven more years before he got Rachel, but it was only a week later. Got that? You guys follow me? He said, and then we'll give you Rachel too, provided you promise to work another seven years. So did he still have to work seven more years? Yes, but he had Rachel and Leah. So now he had plenty of bedroom work while he was working, I guess, is the way it looks. So he agreed to work seven more years. A week after Jacob married Leah, Laban gave him to Rachel too. Laban gave Rachel a servant. And now, guys, I'm not going to read all of that because it is Sally Jesse Raphael. I mean, we're talking, he's now marrying this one's maid servant, and they're having a couple kids, and then a couple kids over here, and a couple kids everywhere. It's like old McDonald's farm, except with kids. Here a kid, there a kid, everywhere a kid, kid, kid. No, read it. If you don't believe me, read it. The kids are just coming out of the word work, and you can have a wife, and you can have a So he has all these kids, but guess what he doesn't have? A kid from Rachel. And that's who he was passionate about. That's who he wanted to have children with. And he now had been surprised, but guess what he learned? Laban was a swindler. Laban took advantage of him. He now knew this. He's trying to make it through life and continue going forward, no matter what comes his way. And he's diligent. And he honors his word. Have you ever found yourself in a position where you're like, um, 
I don't know why I said yes to that because I didn't want to say yes. And now that I have embarked on this, there's no way I want to say yes to that. That's tough. It's difficult. And it's a challenge for us. Totally get it. Totally understand. But what Jacob does is he begins to become a changed person. See, he was a swindler. He stole his brother's birthright. He stole, and then he ended up with somebody that stole from him. And now he's getting taken advantage of. Not much fun. What does it say? You can dish, but you can't take. You know, kids used to say that to each other. We harassed each other, giving them, you know, the rug burns or froggies and all these things we did. So Jacob worked faithfully, and he made Laban wealthy. You ever done that? Don't you love that when you're helping somebody else get rich? You're really taken care of, and you're like, are they just taking advantage of me? Are they just taking advantage of my generosity? Am I, am I giving up everything for somebody else? And when is it my turn that I can have something? And it's not about being materialistic. It's about being prepared for demonic attack. Remember, we get back to that. What is it that the devil's trying to pull from you, that the devil's got somebody trying to take advantage of you, or something that is pulling you down, taking advantage of your joy, taking advantage of your happiness? Well, you could totally be happy, but there's this one thing in your life that just holds you back. You could just feel it. And you can go out to dinner and you start to have fun and you're chatting with everybody, but in the back of your head, you're thinking this. You feel this heaviness. You feel this anxiety I, I, uh, because of this other issue that's hanging on. That's what I'm talking about being prepared for. So you need to be able to look at the devil when the devil brings that up to you and go, oh, no, you didn't. No, no, you didn't bring that up to me. I've got victory. I've been redeemed. I'm taken care of. Whatever it is that God does. So Jacob begins to learn how to handle Laban. So he goes to Laban and says, hey, listen, it's time for me to move on. I've worked for you 14 years, got some wife, tons of kids. We're got, like, we need to like move on with our empire. The house is getting too small. Got to do something different. And Laban says, okay, yeah, so let's make a deal. And Jacob says, well, all I want are the goats that are speckled and spotted, so you know I'm not ripping you off and all your black sheep. I want your junk. I want the stuff that's no good to you. Just give me your junk, and I'll be on my way. Guys, I love junk. That's my wife. I was in the dumpster digging out stuff this week because I thought she threw some of my junk away. She didn't. No, she didn't. She did not throw my junk away, but... I ended up losing a pair of jeans in the process because she would not wash them, and the washing machine said they stunk too bad. <laughs> point is, point is, we, <laughs> I like junk because if Jacob can make junk turn into wealth, why can't I, right? Got to do what these guys in the Bible are doing. How about it? All right, the good stuff. So Jacob says, give me this stuff, and Laban's like, yeah, of course, you bet, buddy. If that's what you want, that's what you get. Don't worry about it. Then what does he do? Runs out to the fields and gets all of his blemished junk and has his boys take it three days' journey away to a different ranch. So then Jacob gets taken advantage of again. But Jacob already was ready. He's like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. I'm going to get my blemished animals. I'm going to get the spotted and the speckled. And I don't exactly know how he came up with this or what it means. But he went out there, did what everybody should, page three, Paul Harvey. And, and, and uh, um, he set up by the breeding area and by the watering troughs a system. And in that system, the animals would breed by it, only select animals. And these animals ended up coming out spotted, striped, and speckled. And before you knew it, Jacob had the strongest herd with the healthiest animals that Laban couldn't deny were his because they were spotted, speckled, and blemished. And so Jacob gets it only because he was prepared. And look at Genesis 29, 43. It says, as a result... Jacob became very wealthy with large flocks of sheep and goats, female and male servants, and many camels and donkeys. So I'm going to tell you today, plan on the devil throwing you the worst 
Don't just be like, well, I got to think positive. Yeah, think positive, but expect the worst. Plan for the worst so it doesn't take you off guard so God can bless you in the midst of it because you don't get distracted. Plan for it. Purpose in your heart to handle the situation well and don't get distracted. And why am I saying that? When somebody can throw that arrow at you, throw the hammer at you, whatever they do, you go, oh, no, you didn't. Oh, 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 no, you didn't. I told you guys one time about the guy that hit me on I-25, sideswiped me, realizes he does it, and guns it and takes off. And I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> and I'm chasing him down, baby. And then long story short, he finally stopped long ago. He's taken care of. Point is, I was prepared. I was ready. Right? You get a rattlesnake in your house. Oh, no, you didn't. You don't come into my house. You get a mouse in your house. Oh, no, you didn't. You know, spider. Oh, no, yeah. right? We have certain rules. Maybe some of you like the spiders on your bed while you're sleeping. I don't know. Some people do. I don't. I see a spider, you're out. Not putting up with it. That's just the way it is. But we have these attacks in our life, and we need to be ready for whatever it is that comes our way. Boss comes in, and he's like giving off this and that, and he gives the other work to somebody else and gives you the grunt work. And you're like, okay, all right. I already planned this isn't going to bother me. This isn't going to upset me. This isn't going to tear me down. I can move on. So... What do you do that kind of helps you prepare? You know, sometimes I tell people, it says, do not be trans uh, conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, how do you get there? How do you get your mind to get in the right place so you can be prepared? And I believe a lot of that's prayer, scripture. So I thought, you know what? Let's look at Psalm chapter 46. We're going to memorize this. And then I, I'm kidding. We're not memorizing. But I thought it was good to look at. If you want to memorize it in the future, that's good for you. Or put it on your refrigerator. Psalm 46, verse 1 says, God is our refuge and our strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Okay, I know that whenever I have an attack, who's ready to help me? But we do that when we make any major event planning. Who are my helpers? Who's going to help us get through the day? Once we figure that out, we know. Hey, if God is my refuge, nothing can stop me. Nothing's going to surprise me. We're good. Verse 2. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. People are like, see, that's talking literally. When the earthquakes come, you know, God will take care of us then. No, no, no. He's talking about the earthquakes in your life. What shatters you now when the mountains are falling, when everything is crumbling out from under you and you feel like your world is a complete disaster? See verse 1. God's my refuge. My, my strength. Oh, okay. Then, verse 3, let the oceans roar and foam. Is this talking about the hurricanes? No, again, it's talking about our battles. Let everything go crazy around us. We're okay. Let the mountains tremble, the water surge. You know what that is? Come on, devil. Give me your best shot. What are you going to do? How are you going to come at me this week? What do you want to say this time? Who's going to attack me now? Who's going to take advantage of me? Who wants to rip me off? What's going to happen? You're going to stress me out? We drive to the, the hospital one time. Twins are still in car seats. Now we had to have Haley in a seat too. I think we had a car load of kids in car seats. Animal crackers on the floor. Try to keep a clean car, but you know, four kids, guys, let's be real. Right? Try them. And Bree's like, you want to lock the car? I'm like, no. Nah. She's like, we're in Denver. I'm like, Pfft. I said, no tweaker is ever going to open this door and go, oh, they got animal crackers. I'll bet there's a bunch of money in here. They're going to go, animal crackers, shut the door, go to the next car. They're looking in the beamers for the cash in the car, right? They don't want what we have. I'm like, come on, devil, give me your best shot. You're not going to steal from me. I don't care. If they need the animal crackers off the floor, they can have them. I don't care. I'll help them out. Be ready, though, for the devil to do something like that for you. It goes on. Verse 4. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. See, God brings the river of blessings. He is our source. Oh, I can do that. I like it. Verse um, 5. God dwells in the city. It can't be destroyed from the very break of day. God will protect it. See, my trust is in the king of kings. Nobody is more powerful than God. And I'm a child of God. 
I have a piece of his inheritance. I have a promise. And because of that, I know I'm good. We're all right. Steal my car. I'll get another one. Take advantage of me. Say bad stuff about me. Whatever it is you want to do, go for it. Have a heyday. Doesn't bother me. It's not going to break me down. Not going to tear me. Oh, what am I going to? What am I going to do this week? I just nah, nah. Come on, bring it on. Hey, you ever had guys? Girls don't do this as much. Guys, you ever have somebody like want to fight you or something, and they like throw you a, a, a punch, and you're like, that? That's what you're bringing forward? Oh, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you know? It's like, what, what, are you kidding me? We've got to be able to look at the devil and go, that, that was stupid. That was just dumb. That is not going to work out well for you. And not worry about it. Verse 6, the nations are in chaos, the kingdoms, and their kingdoms crumble. Bummer for them. Because I know God's voice thunders and the earth melts. See, God, God has it. He's got it under control. It's hard for us to believe that sometimes. Sometimes we have things under control. Verse 7, the Lord of heaven's armies are here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. See, I'm prepared to attack. I'm ready to say, oh, no, you didn't. That, that, that's not going to bother me. Whatever the devil decides to do, I'm moving on. Verse 8 says, come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he being, brings destruction upon the world. Listen. God's not going to allow his protected to be destroyed. We just had a whole conversation about this, went through this in Bible study. God's protected are not going to be destroyed. You are his children. I know, we have children in here. We have parents of children. We have some grandparents, but maybe only one. I don't know, I'm just kidding. Don't want anybody to be, feel, that, feel their age. Okay, so the point is, we have children, and there are things that we do for our children that we just don't do for anybody else. Anybody ever have a sick kid? All of a sudden, you can stay up 24 hours. She's still breathing? Everything okay? Huh? How, how can we be so tired watching the football game, and you're out like a light, but one little kid is a little sick, and that breathing's not where it is, and the doctor's like, no, they're okay. Just monitor them, and you're up like this. Right? You think God doesn't do that for you? You think that God doesn't care about you like that? I'm sorry to say it's true. He does. And he's taking care of us. So when the devil's throwing these cheap shots at you, oh, no, you didn't. I've got some people I can call. I've got, I know a guy. I know a guy that's going to take care of this. Don't mess with me. You're jacking with the wrong guy. You messed with the wrong dude. And you've got to be ready and you've got to be prepared. And it goes on to say, I lost where I was at, so we'll just go with it. Verse 9, he causes wars to end throughout the earth. That's his power. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He doesn't want war. He's not trying for it, but oh, rest assured, don't mess with him. Don't mess with his kids because he's going to solve the problem. But that's not his vision. That's not who he is. I'm not a violent man, but don't jack with my kids. Don't jack with my family because I take care of it. I do take care of it. He burns the shields with fire. See, God is a God of peace. Verse 10, be still and know that I'm God. And how often do we forget that? We're ready. Oh, I've got to do this. I've got to. How many of you have ever not been able to sleep because you've got to think you've got to take care of the whole problem all by yourself? You don't need to do that. Be still. And no, I'm God. See, the devil's attacking, and everybody's trying to mess up everything, and these people are going to take advantage of you, and you just go, whoa, whoa, whoa. God's got this. I'm not going to stress out. I'm all right. I can move on because I'm ready. I'm prepared. I have a calculated response. You're like, man, is this guy going to ever shut up? I'm almost there. So wrap it up. He says, I will be honored by every nation. He's not joking. God's not just messing around about that. Well, I was kind of hoping that people would just love me. I tell you, when our, we had the bad hailstorm a few weeks ago, and the pigs are holding their necks up in the water, and the hail is flooding, and our, it's coming out of the hills. We've got a nice river coming. I didn't go to my girls and say, hey, kids, I was really hoping 
maybe you guys could come out with some buckets and we can try and figure out how to drain hog pen. That wasn't how we handled it. We're like, let's get it done. What do we got to do? And we take out the loader and we've got buckets and we've got pitchers and we've got pitchforks. We're doing whatever it takes to break water free, make a new river so we can preserve our animals, right? It's not a big deal. We're prepared. You think God's not ready for you? If he promises all of this stuff, if this has lasted for generations, do you think we're throwing God a new curveball? Do you really think this is a mystery to him? Oh, for heaven's sake, Philip, I don't know how we're going to handle this one. That's what the doctors do, not God, okay? You go to the doctors, and they're like, oh, my God, I don't know. I've never seen that before. They go, oh, hold on, I got a page. They run into the office. They're Googling it. What is that thing on his arm? <laughs> I mean, okay, maybe that's not true, but it feels like that sometimes. But God's got this, guys. He has it under control, okay? Verse 11, the Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. So I prepare every day for battle, but I know I belong to the biggest army there is. I know where I'm at, and I'm going to tell you, you will not lose. God has no desire for you to go to hell. He does not want to lose his children. He does not want them to be destroyed. So don't be surprised. Be prepared. The devil can't touch what God builds. We talked about that in Job chapter 1. When the devil wanted to attack Job, he had to get God's permission to take down that hedge of protection to do something. The devil can't touch what God builds. Stay faithful. And you know what a coach used to always say? Keep your head in the game. You ever do that? Oh, we lost. There's no doubt about it. That's when I'm tired, and I'm tired of running back and forth, and coaches screaming full court press. You get out here and do it. I'm tired. That's how I felt, but I didn't say anything, because then I'd have been on the bench. But, you know, the point is, you have to, you have to push through and keep your head in the game. I'm not going to stop fighting. I'm not going to give in for nothing. I'm not giving in for nobody, because at the end of the day, I'm not letting the devil take my joy, my peace, my happiness, my family, my life. I'm going to enjoy it. This is my life. I get one shot at it. It better be good. It better be real good. That's what my dad used to say when he got some surprises. He said, this better be real good. So he used to tell us. This is a little different scenario, though. But the point is, when the devil attacks, I want you to be able to just turn and smile and go, oh, no, you didn't. You, you didn't. Do, you did what? Not because, not because you were shocked but because you were simply like, I can't believe you would do something that stupid. And that's the way you need to go, from a place of being surprised to be in a place where you anticipate anything and go, I, I can't believe you finally fell for it. I can't believe you finally did that, devil. We're always worried about the traps the devil lays for us. Why aren't we laying traps for him? Huh? Mess with me. See what you can do this week. What do you want to do, devil? This is going to be fun. Everybody says, oh, the best way to win a game, you've got to have good offense. Defense is important, but if you never score any points, you're never going to get there, right? You can block everything. And Christians, we walk around, defense, defense, defense. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Yes. And they go, all right, devil, I'm going to mess with you. Try to mess this one up. Let's see how you do it. And see how it goes. That's how I feel. Run with it. Let's have a good time. Okay? So anyway, I want every one of you to change your mindset to be prepared. I want you to have a moment that you can be happy and be blessed. I also know that we all have things. And sometimes we need just a little bit something more. And so what I want to do, we close today. I want to pray for everybody. And I want you to take the time to search yourself, search your heart, search your mind. And I want to encourage you. I'm not asking you to come up here. I'm not asking you to tell me. I'm not any of that. I want to encourage you to physically, in your mind, lay that before God's feet and say, this is no longer surprising me, and I'm changing my thought process about how I respond to these things. So if you'll please stand with me. I'm going to pray over you. I want you to, to release whatever that is and let God just fill you with his victory, with his glory. I'm telling you, if he can heal Meritha's eyes, if he can heal Dick, if he can do these things for us, 
Why wouldn't he take away your issue? Why wouldn't he take away your problem? Why wouldn't he want you to have joy? Why wouldn't he want you to have victory? So Father God, right now, Jesus, I lift up everybody here. We're all giving you something right now, Jesus. We're telling you, Lord, take this from me. Take this thorn in my flesh from me. Jesus says the yoke is easy, but the burden is light. Cast your cares upon Jesus. Jesus, we're lifting this up to you. It's not our battle. It's not our journey. We'll be faithful in here, Lord. We're asking you to give us a supernatural grace, a supernatural strength. Send your angels to surround us. Take away the spots, the vulnerabilities, the sensitivities that the devil's trying to poke at. And turn us into defenders where we can look and come on, touch me again, devil. And Lord, let us have a boldness in our mind that we know we can stand against what you are bringing against us, what the devil is bringing against us. And we know that what you bring for us is our victory. I ask you, Father God, right now to touch our hearts, touch our minds. When all of a sudden we forget, we start to stress out. We go, oh, no, you didn't, devil. Oh, no, you didn't. You're not taking me down like that. And you give us a new strength. And you give us the fight and the willingness to continue to go on. I pray your anointing over every head. I pray your vision, your strength over each person. Be with us, Father God, as we continue to sacrificially give our lives for your glory, for your beautiful salvation that other people get to have. Keep us safe, Lord. Keep the sickness away from us in the name of Jesus. Amen.